Well, hello everyone. This is Robin Carter and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator out of Flower Mound, Texas. And today I'm here to share with you a my second part of my free online class using the translucent floral stamp set. Probably hard to see there with the uh, glare. But anyway, I'll show you'll get to see it when we switch to hands down. Before we begin, let me thank those of you that have subscribed to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support. And if you're new to my channel and have yet to subscribe, I would really appreciate if you would hit that subscription button below. I'm thankful for all of those who view this video. Thank you so much. And uh, let me share a special from Stampin' Up! going on during July are called Bonus Dollar Days. And what that means is for every $50 of merchandise you purchase from Stampin' Up!, you will receive in your email a gift certificate code for $5 off that can be used during August. So again, for each $50, so let's say you purchase 100, you would get two of those. So be sure and save those emails with those codes. They cannot be resent out. Better yet, I recommend you take a screenshot of that so it goes to your photos and it might be easier to find flag it, do all those things so you don't lose those codes. So let's switch to hands down so I can share some more things with you. Okay, this is the uh, translucent florals, uh, stamps, and dies. And in the annual catalog, you can find that product on page 80. Now, interesting enough, these are returning bundles. In other words, they have been in uh, catalogs before, but they're no longer available as a bundle with a 10% savings. However, this one, the translucent florals, seems to still be as a bundle. Now, unfortunately, I made a little note here and I checked again. The dies are currently unavailable and it, they're supposed to be in expected based on the inventory status July 22nd, which is just a few days from now. So if you do not have this set and you're interested in purchasing an, it as a bundle with 10% savings, the bundle number is 162253. And that is not in the catalog. So you can go to the online store and uh, find it as a bundle. Um, I guess they updated that because when I did my first class, it was expected August 19th. So as I say, when something's out of stock and it's something you want to add to your stash, check that st online store often as sometimes things come in before expected. So let me close my catalog here. Just wanted to share that with you. Okay, also before we begin, going on now is the subscription period for the August paper pumpkin kit. I still haven't received my July yet. As soon as I get it, I will do an unboxing and I think it's going to be a beautiful kit. So stay tuned. Um, but going on now is the August kit. It's going to be birthday themed. And when I post my blog post for this class, I will include more information about this. It is a card uh, kit. And they've released a new little picture that I'll put in my blog post. So check out my blog, uh, which is robinscreations.wordpress.com and uh, you might want to subscribe to it. This is the first place I share things so just be aware. Also right now are the coordinating dies for this quarter item number 164991 and I've yet to share those so let me share those now. I store these in the same kind of sleeve uh, I do my paper pumpkin stamp sets which are part of my favorite things. I mean look at this this leaf is quite large can put it in my hand and you can see, kind of get an idea of the size. And then there's a hooray, which will go with the August kit. And this will cut out a stamp in our June kit, which is very nice uh, to have that. So you don't have to fussy cut flowers. So like I said, this is one of my favorite things. It's these small uh, Avery L envelopes that I store my smaller paper pumpkin stamp sets. And there's also large ones uh, when the stamp set is too big Probably these numbers will be too big to store in there. And I store those in the larger ones. Uh, if you're a Paper Pumpkin subscriber of mine, you get those sleeves to store your envelopes in as a special thank you for being a Paper Pumpkin subscriber of mine. So that's the Paper Pumpkin information. And, and now I'm going to share with you my online uh, free to go class. It's 
Well, the video is free. If you want to purchase the class to go kit, which is everything you will need to create the six cards that we are creating, here is the information on that. So it's gonna be $25, which includes shipping. What you need to do is send an email to me at robinstampsandscraps at gmail.com um, with your pay PayPal information so that I can send you an invoice. Be sure that your PayPal account is up to date with your current address because that is where your supplies will be mailed to. Um, it's gonna include everything you need Minus, of course, the translucent floral bundle. Uh, you'll need a trimmer, some adhesive, dimensionals, ink, blending brush, and a die cut machine to cut your uh, translucent floral flowers. Um, I'm going to include with this kit, because I did bring in some other things. If you do not have, because um, I don't expect you to have all these just to do this class, I will include any die cut pieces that I make using additional dies. Okay, so those will be included. And also, since I'm new to this, I'm gonna also emboss your pieces that require embossing, only because I, I wanna make it easy for you and get some feedback as far as how you like that kind of kit. They will include the six card base, thick white card bases that I like to use, as well as envelopes. So, so it's gonna include your ribbon and then DSP, everything already done for you. Let me set this aside and we can get started with our fourth card. So if you miss the first set of the, my three cards, there will be a link at the end of this video in the end credits of how you can find that video or you can always click on my YouTube channel and do, go to videos and that will be there. Okay, so the first card um, that we're gonna do uses this piece of designer series paper. Now, as you can see here, I made a cut right in the center with the deck gold, which I had right here, uh, rectangles. <laughs> I, I so miss our stitched rectangles, but these are the next thing closest to it, and it gives it a little whimsical look, which I like. So if you order the class to go kit, this will already be cut for you, okay? And it does use the fourth largest um, deckled die. Okay, and then you're going to need with the third largest deckled die, which this will be included in your class to go kit, a piece of pretty peacock. Okay, you'll need a four and one eight by five and three eighths piece of uh, pretty peacock. Now, if you're a paper saver and you're doing this on your own, you can cut this piece out of this piece because this is just gonna go on the outside. So just a little tip if you're a paper saver, but my class to go kit, you will get a solid piece like that. Um, you're also gonna need a thick white card base, which I have a bunch of them stored. That's the gold ones. And my other favorite things, my favorite things are things in my craft room that uh, I use to help organize myself that Stampin' Up! does not supply. And a list of my favorite things is in the video description box of this video. I am an Amazon affiliate, so those are safe links to use. And when you use those, I get a few pennies back at no cost to you, which helps bring me these videos to you. So thank you ahead of time, or for those of you that have used those in the past, thank you so much for your support using those. So here's our thick white. I am filling this side. They're pretty close, but this one is just a hair wider. So you'll wanna use that one on the front of your uh, card. Okay, so this one is gonna be fairly easy. Now I did bring in some additional sentiments and um, these, I cannot pre-stamp items for you, but here is what I brought in. On my last first three, you saw I used some from this Comforting Thoughts. And the item number for it is 163691. And then another favorite sentiment stamp set of mine is 162882 called Heartfelt Hexagon. So I do recommend those. They're great sentiments to use. And I'm going to use the Heartfelt Hexagon with uh, this card right here. Now, obviously, you can use other uh, sentiments, but this is what I'm going to use. 
All right, so let's get that stamped. All right, I think I have some paper over here that I've worked with. Okay, it's right here. You can see I've punched one already. Now, for this one in particular, it does have a coordinating punch, which let me grab that real quick. Okay, called the Heartfelt Hexagon. <laughs> Makes sense. And the item number for it is 162888. Um, I will include a punch in, in the to-go class already punched out. So let's let me show you what I did for this. I'm going to use my full size Pretty Peacock ink pad because it makes it much easier. Okay, you want to ink it up. Now, again, with our new, well, they're not new, but with the foam ink pads, you want to be careful and not mash. So, literally, just setting it on there is about the amount of pressure you want to ink those up. I am going to stamp this here. Now, also when you use punches, you kind of want to make sure that, um, like I didn't turn it that way, because otherwise I'd have to cut the paper to get to the punch. You want to make sure you line it up like your punch is, so you can get to the image. That's a nice uh, little border there. And then I'm going to use my sentiment. Now, I left some pretty peacock ink on there without cleaning it, so it did stain the inside. And apparently I mashed mash because it got on the inside of the lettering. Now for this one, I may have to get my head in the way, but you just want to center this sentiment. And I love it. Sending you lots of love and hugs. So hopefully I got that straight. I tried not to get too far in under. That looks good. So let me clean that off with my chamois over here. And now we can punch it out. Um, in case I always like close my ink pad and do that. That enough time gives it enough time to dry. So hopefully I don't smear it. And then we can line this up. Kind of centered. I may have to may push it towards me so I can see if it's centered. Okay, that looks good. And be sure and not have like the fat of your hand because I have smushed mine in there several times so just be careful when you do that and if you're new to our punches these are the lockdown punches so you would just press it closed and move the lever that way and it locks it closed okay so there is our sentiment all right and this one's going to be pretty easy to put together so the first thing I want to do is put my pretty peacock layer down and I'm going to use my uh, multi-purpose liquid glue for this because that gives me wiggle room. So you probably want to stay tuned because <laughs> inevitably I'll make a mistake somewhere. Um, and I keep my videos real so that if you make those same mistakes, you might know how to correct them. All right, so let's put that in the center of the card base. Then I'm going to put the outside. Now you can decide which one you like. Do you like it um, and ignore the, Yes, that is cut out of it. Do you like this look? Okay, or you can flip it over and have that look. So you get to decide. Um, it's your card. You can use whichever side you like. I'm going to keep all the pretty flowers to make it... Um, stand out because that sentiment's going to go over the center one. Okay, so let's center this on here. Okay, now don't worry, that's going to get covered with our center piece. Now, I want to make a border of the uh, pretty peacock with that, which will help hide the cover. If you just put that on dimensionals, it would look silly, I think. And I think that helps it out a lot. So let's adhere this piece to that. 
this one's going to be a quick, easy card, especially if you have all the um, die cut pieces with the class to go kit already done for you, which they will be. I can't include the sentiment though. We're not allowed to send stamped images. But like I said, it's a great kit to keep around. Okay, so first I want to decorate this piece that's going to go on this card with dimensionals. And I've used some ribbon. It's still on the clearance rack, but I kind of like it with this. It doesn't really take away from the card, but it helps separate the sentiment. And this is the white <clears throat> frayed it's called on the uh, clearance rack yeah there it is frayed ribbon and so you'll receive a piece just like this in your class to go kit that you can uh, adhere on here now i have my big o 3m uh, <laughs> tape runner here that i've had for years and years because i generally use multi-purpose glue but it doesn't work well on ribbon so find the center. I also like to put a piece of tape runner on. I'm going to do this off to the side because if I stick it on my paper, where the ribbon's going to go. Okay, so let's adhere that. as close to the center to your eye is fine. And then since I have that tape runner on the back, I can just wrap that around and adhere it. All right, so let's put this on our card using dimensionals. So you'll also need dimensionals. Those are not included in the to-go class. And I cut these in half. You don't have to, I just do that. Now, you'll notice here I'm putting the dimensionals there and there. Sometimes if you, uh, like if I put it here, it might be a hair taller because it's on top of the ribbon. So I put them there. All right, and then follow your uh, leaves. I forgot to tell you, when you put this piece on, make sure your leaves are going up, be aware of that. And I'm just going to eyeball that and put that there. And then I am going to put this on uh, with tape runner on my ribbon because liquid doesn't seem to help. Now you could put a tad of liquid adhesive maybe here and here just to help it. Okay, and then there is sending lots of love and hugs. Now I forgot to mention it was in the list, but this class will also include, I'm looking for them, a half pack of the translucent pearls, which are absolutely gorgeous. They, uh, here they are, they give a shimmer. This is some that I've used already. So you'll get a half pack with this kit. If you have the Stampin' Blends, you can color these, but I really like the reflection that they do of the light when they're on there. So let's add a few of these to that. I like to use my Take Your Pick tool and just get some up. Um, the putty end works well, <laughs> so let me get it. Um, I don't keep it on my Take Your Pick tool because I just have it here. Um, Let's see, let's, and these look best kind of in a uh, triangle type of area. So that was a large, let's put a small one here and another large here. So that just adds a little bit of bling to um, your card. So this is the finished card. Here is uh, one I pre-did. They just have some different uh, embellishments on there that were retired but um, I wanted to use something that was current for the class. All right, so let me put these away. These five by seven envelopes are also part of my favorite things. And you can see here, I have already pre-done like a kit that you would get in the to-go class. You would get all those pieces um, in a little uh, protective sleeve, including the, the punch, which you could put any sentiment in there. 
Okay, and then you have a clear plastic sleeve to store your card in once it's done. So I'll just keep all those things in here for now and let's get on to our fifth card. Now I do, <laughs> I do know and I, I caught it when I got to my uh, next card in the first class. I totally had um, memory problems with uh, this card. Let me show you. And I, I don't remember if it was this one or this one, but I didn't, when I was doing the center part, I put it here and I didn't even catch that until my second card. So be sure when you're making that flower, which we'll do one again, so you know uh, exactly where to put that. So I do have all my stamps lined up here in my Stamparatus. The Stamparatus is a stamp positioning tool that is no longer available from Stampin' Up. Uh, the current one on the market uh, is Misty, and so it would work the same. I don't know if you can fit all of them on there, but you could put as many as you could, do all your stamping, and then replace them. How I get them centered is I just put them somewhere, and with the Stamparatus, you want to kind of keep away from the edges because the hinges uh, may raise that stamp up and you got to press harder to get that image. So I put them on my Stamparatus, stamp them. Now I do it one at a time. Stamp it right on this uh, piece of the Stamparatus, the grid. And then I take the negative of the die and line it up with that image. So now all I have to do is die cut a bunch of pieces and I can stick them right in the machine for stamping and so it saves on paper quite a bit because you can uh, cut these as close as you want to get the die cut images whereas if you're stamping die cutting you kind of need to leave more space so it saves a little bit of paper that way as well plus it makes it easier if you're doing multiple stamps okay so let me get out the colors we're going to do this one in Got all kinds of goodies here on my desk. We're gonna stamp this flower in Calypso Coral. Then we're gonna do the large flower in Berry Burst. And then the leaves, if you have Parakeet Party, you can use it, but the current color that's close enough is Lemon Lime Twist. You can see those right next to each other. So I'm gonna use Lemon Lime Twist. <laughs> I almost got tongue twisted. Uh, in that one for the leaves and then also we're going to add an accent like pretty peacock. I showed that in my first video but I will do that again uh, just so you know exactly what um, how to do that. All right let's do this one first Calypso Coral. By the way I I showed also if you're using the full size pads they're sometimes too juicy for these distinctive stamps. I find that the ink spots work great for these distinctive stamps. Now, if you have the full size pad, you'll wanna take like a spoon, okay? And rub the ink in one direction and then stamp where you pushed the ink to the side because distinctive stamps, they have teeny tiny little uh, texture on them that gives the two-tone look without you having to go through a lot of work. That's a great image right there. And by the way, I'm okay when it leaves little white accents. Now, <laughs> my poor little finger here, yes, I sliced it yesterday. I was opening boxes for the recycle bin and I, yeah, down the scissor it went. So um, it's pretty bad. I've covered it up so you can't see it, but it's gonna heal. All right, for this flower, I like to add a center part. This is the early espresso marker. Now, if you don't have the markers, I showed how you can use a blender pen with ink to add that. Let's go ahead and add that. I had to relearn how to do everything without my little index finger. Okay, I like that. Now, and by the way, I showed also when you have a hard time getting those out, Sometimes your putty tool helps pop them up. Okay, and now let's do the large flower. We're gonna do that in berry burst. In 
And before I close that, let me have a damp paper towel that I'm just going to clean that off with. I keep the damp paper towel over my chamois because it's very warm here and the air is going and it dries out my chamois so quick. So if I keep a damp paper towel on top, it um, <laughs> kind of tickle. It helps it not dry out so fast. Not lose all my supplies. This is the extra in case I messed up. Okay, let's press on that one a little bit harder, see if we can get a better impression. That's also what's great about using a stamp positioning tool, and I like that. Let me just see if I can get a little less white. Okay, that's good. I may not have put enough ink. Oh, I need to do the center. Now the center, this is how you should do that flower. Not in the bottom, which I did on the very, very first card, but right where the center would be of this flower. So I apologize for that mess up. I can't believe, I knew it looked weird and I can't believe it didn't cross my mind that I did that wrong. Okay, much better. And again, they stick in here pretty well, so that helps. Okay, we're also gonna do a little flower for that one. And we're gonna do it in fresh, Freesia, which I have a spot of it here. Now the spots, a lot of them I have from Paper Pumpkin. I love Paper Pumpkin kits, um, but you can make them yourself. They do sell the uninked ink spots in a set of five. And then you can buy the reinkers and make your own little spots. And these are great for travel. They work really good. I like to use them with, when I use my Stamparatus. So, um, I do like uh, the spots. I like my full size pads, but I like my spots too. Um, you can, and I'm gonna add the little bottom of that flower there. There we go. And every time those get really stuck in there. But I mean, that really helps. Okay, one more stamping I think is, um, well, I already have it done, so we don't have to, uh, worry with that is a little um, sprig. So I stamped that in pretty peacock. You can see there. All right, so let's get to the leaves. I have one. Um, let's go ahead and stamp the other one in lemon lime twist. Again, pretty peacock if you have it, but it is retired. Pretty peacock is like a in between of this color and Granny Apple Green. It was a end color that retired back in April, but this color is very, very close. Okay, let's let the paper absorb that. And you can see here, I, I really don't remember if I did this in Lemon Lime Twist or Pretty Peacock. We will see uh, when this one comes out. But I just like the pattern of the leaves of the card we just did. Okay, I really like how they added this pretty peacock accent. So I'm gonna uh, reproduce that. Now I showed this in the first class, but I'm gonna show it again. Okay, I, I have the markers and I realize the markers are only set, uh, sold by the color family. If you got this, it would have been a part of the new colors that were available for purchase um, last year, and I think they may, may have been a celebration item. So you may have this in your stash if you chose that pack. Um, I also showed how to use the blender pen with a little uh, ink palette of Pretty Peacock. So be sure and check out the first one if you missed that. Okay, that's pretty good. Again, right there is kind of close, so I had to give it a little extra push. But here's what I did, and you would do the same thing with a blender pen that had pretty peacock ink on it, is I just went along the edges with the marker. And if you look at the dot, uh, not dot, if you look at the stamp, they kind of show a, a line, like you can see it here where the leaves overlap, and you can put that in there. 
as well too. Now, whether you're using the blender pen or the marker, it's a pretty good idea to give it a huff of ink or a huff of breath um, in case your ink dried out. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this up to me to give it a big huff. Now that just helps the moisture from your huff. <laughs> Make sure that the ink is still wet. It remakes it so it goes. So let's see if I huffed enough. And I like that. So see what detail that brings to your leaves. I really like that. So that's, and again, it's a optional step. You can just go with the plain leaf but I really like that detail. So all I have to do is do that again on this leaf. I do recommend when you're doing these, go ahead and stamp both of them in one color. That way you don't have to re-clean and you can just put your ink back on here again. Does that make sense to everyone? Again, if you have any questions, leave those in the comments for me. I do try to read them all. Okay, let's hope I went over everything. Maybe that would be the benefit of <laughs> cleaning it, then you would know for sure that was fresh ink. So let's huff again. I feel like I'm in Pilates. Breathe. So. Okay, I like it. Again, each one's probably gonna end up a little different and that's okay. It looks more like nature. So we can clean that. I believe that is all our stamping. Or did I do a little one on this card? You know what? Let's go ahead and do a double leaf because I really think I only used one, but I wanted to show you how to color the leaf. So we'll have an extra one for another card. Okay, this is a double leaf one, which I have here. Let's do it in Lemon Lime Twist. And close. Excuse me. Let me get a little sip, <laughs> something to drink. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing I did, adding the pretty peacock detail. All right, let's give it a little huff. Yep, and there's our double leaf. Okay, set that there. Now I think we're really done with all our stamping. I love my little craft desk I set up for myself. It's basically just two Tabletops stacked on top with um, little spacers, and I can store my stamparatus right underneath me. All right, let's clean up the inks. I think, I think we're done. So, when uh, if you order the class to go kit, you'll have a sheet of paper like this, and you're going to want to trim it uh, somewhere. You can choose this one, I cut at the two and a quarter. Uh, space, but you can uh, choose different if you don't like that amount. If you want more flowers, you can make this not as big. Okay, and then, but I want to add a ribbon across here. And here's a trick if you uh, aren't layering it on another layer and you have a cut piece like that. I like to add tape runner to uh, the cardstock. Okay. And then I'm going to set my ribbon right on top of that with it having a little hanging over to help cover uh, the other piece. Okay, and you can, if you want that more, you can obviously do that more like that. Then I'm going to put a little, whoops, on that. 
And then when you put these on, let me just fold that over. You know, this piece will overlap that piece and someone won't know that they're not attached to both pieces. So let's adhere these down. I'm gonna use my Tombow multi-purpose glue so I have wiggle room to get it straight. I filled up my bottle so it's nice and full. It was running low. By the way, if you get these, the nozzle is kind of uh, narrow. So when I'm refilling them, I squeeze it and start dropping the glue in. That way, when it gets to the top, I can let go and it kind of sucks it down in there. Um, I wish it weren't as narrow as it was. So again, this kind of has a pattern. You can see the little sprigs going that way. So make sure you get that correct. And this one won't matter because it's a nice watercolor wash of, I believe, Berry Burst. I've kind of got on my Berry Burst shirt <laughs> today. Do many of you go around naming your clothes colors like the Stampin' Up! colors? I do. Okay, so there is that. Now we're going to decorate this on the countryside corners dies. Again, you if you're doing this on your own, you could use maybe the deckled rectangles again or any large image. This one is, I believe, the third largest. Okay, in the class to go kit, you will receive a pre-cut white piece like that. And let's start building our flower scene. So this is what I do. I just lay it aside and kind of start building my flower scene like I like it. Okay, maybe up more for the sprig. Because I'm going to put the sentiment right down here on the bottom. And I'm going to use one from that comforting thought set that I I love all the sentiments in it. Um, I pointed out yesterday, this is the first one. Usually it says, uh, usually you get a, I'm here for you. This one has a, we are, we're <laughs> here for you, which I like. Because if you're sending that like from you and your husband or from a church group or something, it's more than just uh, me. It's, I, we are, multi plural. <laughs> Let me get that word out, plural. Right, let me get back out my stamper, uh, stamp and pierce mat. I have that stamp on a block. Now, if you don't have these stamps, you could uh, do the happy birthday that comes in this set right down there. I'm going to use the, hopefully this is the we. Yes, we're here for you. And I'm going to do this in Memento Black ink. Okay, now... With fine little words like this, let me get this more in, in the camera. You don't want to twist and wiggle or you'll get a whole bunch of ink on there. So I'm going to hopefully I have it enough. There's always two sides. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave that alone. All right, and now <clears throat> rebuild our floral scene. And I think I can just start adhering because, well, let's put this one over here. Just put some in the center for starters. I'll let it hang off the tag a little bit. Like that flower right over the sentiment. I can do this one over here. And I'm going to tuck this little flower. Sorry, I keep covering that up in case you're trying to look at it. Um, there. And then we can add more flowers, these double leaf flowers, around. Well, I do want it in there. And then we'll put our little sprig up here. Okay, I like that. And then we're going to adhere this whole thing on our card. 
using dimensionals. Now, if your sentiment is much larger than that, feel free to add it on a separate uh, piece of white cardstock, like down below, like I've done in some other cards. Let's get out our dimensionals. Now, the other thing I like to do is for the center parts, I like to just put those right on the card so that it doesn't go on top of my ribbon. Okay, I'm going to eye where the center of that is. Okay, and then just add some pearls and we will be all done with this one. Now, since this is um, busy down here, I'm going to put my two for my triangle up here. Okay, so every card is better with a little bit of bling. <laughs> so here is this card. Here's the one I did earlier. And I use the I'm here for you versus that. And you can see they're all going to turn out a little different. I put that leaf there. I thought it maybe it looked better here this time. And I do have different embellishments that were retired, but I'm using the current ones uh, since that's what's available. All right, so that is the fifth card of the six. And now the last one is quite easy. Um, this last piece of designer series paper, I really was having trouble coming up with what to do with it because I didn't want it to get covered up too much. So it's a large piece of these large flowers. Now, since I didn't want to cover them up, what I did is I just wanted to mount them on a blackberry, uh, blackberry bliss piece of cardstock. So the cardstock is three and a quarter by four and a half because I cut this to three by four and a quarter. So just a tip when you're cutting like items like this, if you cut it at four and a quarter across, then you can get four three inch pieces like that. Now in the class card class to go kit, you're gonna get one of these and I don't know which way the flowers are gonna go, but I've, I it works great any pattern you get it was just may, might depend on where you put your sentiment to not cover up a large flower so let's adhere this to the blackberry bliss piece of cardstock well <laughs> i should have set it back upside down there we go let me put it in its little cup to keep it the glue side down well, I'll just, we'll be getting it back in a second. Okay, and then this is a piece of fresh freesia, which works really well with Blackberry Bliss, you can see there. So I have embossed it with the eyelet. It's not a 3D, oh, it is a 3D. So see, when I get my embossing folders, I put the name and whether it's 3D or not, that's the item number. And uh, that way I know which um, sandwich in my die cut and emboss machine to use when I run it through. So let's feel, okay, I've got the right side up. Let me make sure I've done everything. All right, so let's adhere this down. The card class to go kit, this will be pre-embossed for you. Okay, center that on the card front. And then this I'm going to put on the card using dimensionals. This one's this one's a real easy put together card, but the flowers of this designer series paper really makes it pop and does all the hard work for us. Okay.
All right, and let's just put that right in the center. Now for the sentiment, I here's one that I did already, and I used the unbounded love with a happy birthday and some fine uh, sheer <laughs> ribbon. I wasn't real happy with that, so I brought out my um, let me get the right the right name stylish shapes dies. So um, in the card class to go, you're going to have a stylish shape die circle like that, as well as a piece of Blackberry Bliss to attach that with and the silver ribbon. So like I said, it may just like, you know, if you don't want to cover up your flowers, you can decide where to put this. I already have some dimensionals on the back of this. Okay, and you will get a little piece of the ribbon. Let me see if I have it. This is a current ribbon, which would be nice for any, all of these cards. If you don't get the card kit to go because that other ribbon is long retired, but this is, it is called silver and white. And the item number for it is 162149. By the way, if you do not have a demonstrator, I would appreciate if you would Use this host code when purchasing uh, the items for this free online card kit. So thanks for uh, the video. So there is the final. It's not quite straight. Let me straighten it up while I'm here. Okay, so those are the two. Um, like I said, you're going to receive this one. I like that much better than this. That's kind of how I do things is as I go uh, things happen and like here is a kit already that would go that you would receive as the card kit to go class so and there's the ribbon on the back all right so in review let me just bring out all the cards if i can find them all pretty quick so here is this one and here's the first three we did wait i'm missing one This one we just did today. Get one out. Okay, so these are the six cards that you can create uh, following the instructions and uh, supplies that I shared over the last two videos. Um, I'm kind of cleaning up here. I've got little backings all over the place. Let me switch back to myself. So thank you all for watching. And again, if you have any questions, be sure and leave those in the comments. Uh, the best thanks you can give me is a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, share this with your other paper crafting friends and um, subscribe. Did I say subscribe to my YouTube channel? So on the end credits to this will be a button that you can hit to subscribe. I'll also link the first video uh, showing the first three sets of cards made and also a link to my online store. So until my next video, which will be the unboxing, I'm hoping I get it in the next day or two of the July uh, paper pumpkin kit, which I'm looking forward to. I think it's gonna be beautiful. So thanks for joining me, everyone. I hope you have a blessed day. Until my next video, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.